um, forgot to put it down in my notes, so I'm going to say it now. Any of our ministers that are going to ministers retreat in Anchorage upcoming, please let us know. Um, the church will be taking care of your rooms for you. So if you are a minister and you're going to ministers retreat in Anchorage, um, please let us know so we can get those rooms reserved for you. Um, and uh, if you don't know the dates, let me know and I'll get those dates to you. Amen. Amen. Oh, so good to be in church today. Yes. Amen. Amen. I'm excited about the upcoming revival services. Yes. And uh, for those of you that are watching online, Facebook, um, I want to make sure that you are aware of the upcoming services that we have. Um, Brother Greg Pounds will be here starting Wednesday night, this coming Wednesday night, and he'll be preaching for us. I've never met him before, but he comes with high recommendations from Brother Hernandez. And if you get high recommendations from Brother Hernandez, that's pretty good. So uh, he called me and told me, hey, um, I know you've been looking for someone. I really feel like this is the person for you. And so I'm uh, looking very much forward to uh, meeting him, but more um, to being uh, a part of the ministry that transpires here over the next week. Um, this time next week, there's going to be a lot, a lot that is transformed in our church, in your life individually. So um, make, it a, uh, make it a priority. Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, and Sunday to be here. Um, we're taking Saturday off. You can sleep in Saturday. You can, you can get the family things that you need to get done, but make it a priority to be here. For those of you on Facebook, please come. Please visit. This is for you too. Amen. We bring these speakers in for our city, and so um, just asking you to come and be a part of this. Amen. Ephesians 1, 18 and 19. What an amazing morning. Yes. Step out and it's seven degrees. Amen. Now, Jesus. you've, you've got to put that in context. Right. If, you're in, if, if you're in Arizona and you step out and it's seven degrees, oh my goodness, heaven has, has just frozen over. It's just not right. You, you step out today at seven degrees, it's like heat wave. Yeah. I would look at the young lady's shoes and they're all sandals, sandals and open toe. It's like, seven degrees? Of course, that's what you're supposed to wear in seven degrees. You know, the, the, everybody's in light clothing and, and, and lighter coats and stuff. It's like, hey, man, it's seven degrees. Of course, that's what you're supposed to do in it's seven degrees. So, yeah, everything, everything is, is uh, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Relative. But, uh, yeah. Thankful for seven degrees this morning. Yes. Amen. 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 Ephesians 1, 18 and 19. The eyes of your understanding being enlightened. The eyes of your understanding being enlightened. Why? That ye might know what is the hope of his calling and what is the riches of his glory of his inheritance in the saints and what is the exceeding greatness of his power to usward who believe according to the working of his mighty power. According to the working of his mighty power. Now, there's a lot of ways I can go with this scripture. There's so many different places that I could go with this scripture. But God placed on my heart to preach this message to you today. And I want to preach to you today about the eyes of faith. Amen. The eyes of faith. God, we ask you this morning to speak to each and every one of us. Help us, God, as you move in this house, as your spirit is here already. Lord, let your, let your spirit take this word and apply it to every heart that is here. Everyone that is listening online, God, may this word affect them, God. May they hear and receive it, God. May they believe it and respond to it, I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. You may be seated. The Christian life is so very opposite of our natural, normal, everyday life. Yes, sure. Everything that we live in here in this world, our life here exists in what is relative, what, what, is, what is visible or real, what we can see, touch, feel, all those things. We're looking for a surety, for a guarantee to make sure before anything 
at all. We, we, we want to make sure of everything. We, I don't care who you are, we are all analytical in one sense or another. Everybody is. There are some people that are way more analytical than others, but pretty much everybody that sits in this house today is analytical. Yeah. We've all been taught, and, I, and we all live by the creed, don't jump before you look. Just make sense, right? You want to make sure it's safe down there before you jump off that thing. You want to make sure that whatever it is, the parachute's going to open. You want to, we're all looking for a guarantee. We're all looking for a surety. We're all looking that there is going to be a certainty of the outcome that we're after. If there's not a certainty of the outcome that we're after, we just don't do it. We just don't do it. Nobody heads off into the wild blue yonder thinking, well, I think I got enough gas. Should be gas stations down there somewhere. No, we all want surety. Our natural senses are given to us to ensure that we have the <coughs> ability to function in this world. You have eyesight. Yes. Every one of us have eyesight. Those eyes of ours are very important in everything that we do. Yes. Put a blindfold on and you find out how important those eyes are. They, they give us input to what is in front of us. They show us things that are real and, and, and valid and, and help us to keep from stumbling and bumbling around and falling in the ditch. Um, our, our sound helps us to stay away from danger. We can hear things. We, we know things are around us when we hear sound. And we can, we can ascertain whether it's safe or not safe by the sounds that are around us. Our smelling helps us with that. We, we can smell things. We can feel things. We can taste things. All of our senses are given to us to help us in this life, to keep us safe, to guide us through to making right decisions and doing things that are safe. That's what they're all there for. But our senses are useless in the Christian walk. They, they don't work. Eyes don't work. Ears don't work. Feet smell, touch, taste. They don't work when it comes to faith. You see, our, our walk in, in our Christian life is a walk that is lived by faith. I'm sorry, Amy, I should have got you these verses, but Galatians 2 and 20 talks to us about our walk, our Christian walk of faith. Galatians 2 and 20 says, I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live. Yet not I, but Christ liveth in me. And the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. I, I don't live by the flesh. I live by the faith. I, I walk by faith. This, this walk that I have is not a walk that is lived in the flesh. I, I don't measure things by what I see in the flesh. I have to see them. I have to be directed and guided by faith. We as children of Jesus have to be able to follow spiritual direction. Right. You have got to be able to be led and guided by the Spirit and directed by the Spirit. Amen. How we operate as Christians are not carnal. We don't live in the carnal way. The entirety of our life is being led and operating in the spiritual, in the supernatural. Yes. As such... We, you and I, have to be led by the Spirit of God. You've got to be led by the Spirit of God. Amen. He speaks to us. God does speak to us. Now, there are people out there that would absolutely make total fun of that and say, you hear voices speaking to you? There's voices in the air talking to you? And these are the same people that would confess any faith in God whatsoever. The, the reality of it is, is yes, I believe that there is a God. And if I believe there is a God, I believe my God wants to communicate yes. with me. And he does communicate. He does speak. Yes. Our God does speak to us. Yes. And so we, we hear the voice of God. We, we must have spiritual eyesight and we must have spiritual understanding. 
We have to have, as Christians, we have to have the eyes of faith. That's what I'm preaching to you this morning about. The eyes of faith. We have got to have the eyes of faith. Every one of us. But we got to start back at the very beginning. We need and we know we have to be led by the Spirit. And we know we have to have eyes of faith. But we got to start at the very beginning of where does faith begin? At what point can we actually say that we have faith? What does it mean to say that we have faith? How does faith itself operate in our lives? The answers to that are all found in the Word of God. Yes. Romans 10 and 17. It tells us where faith comes from. Okay? It says in Romans 10, 17, So then faith cometh how? By hearing. By hearing. Faith comes by hearing. Not just anything. Faith doesn't come just by hearing anything. There is Faith can only come by hearing and hearing by the word of God. So the only way faith can be in your life is by hearing the word of God. It has to be by the word of God. We, we have to have the word of God. Now, I have preached many times from this passage, and, I, and you have heard many, many sermons about faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. I want to expound on that this morning. I want to help you have an over, a better overall understanding of what this word means to you. In order to have faith, you must first start with the word of God. It, 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 you cannot have faith if you do not have the word of God. Everything about faith is based off of the word of God. Okay? We preach from this Bible. What's in this Bible is the Word of God. Yes. If, if it's in the Word of God, you can have faith about it. Okay? You, you, can, you can completely put faith on something that is found in here. It, 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 you, you can have faith because you have Word. Now, we can believe that God has power because the Word of God says that. Okay, but faith, I, I, can, I can have hope, but hope is not faith. Let me put it to you this way. I hope the Yankees win the World Series this year. I do. I hope they win the World Series. That's, that's a hope of mine. They got a new pitcher. They got some great batters. They got some good things going for them. Man, I hope the Yankees win the World Series. But I can't have faith that they're going to win. No. Totally opposite. Now, if a prophecy comes from the Word of God that says the Yankees will win the World Series in 2020, then I can have faith that the Yankees will win. Why? Because I have hope right now. There has been nothing of the Word of God that has told me something that is going to happen. Nothing. I only have hope that something will happen. But when the Word comes and declares to me that something is going to happen, that there is something in the Word that I'm given, then because I have a Word, then I can have faith that that will happen. I can hope for a lot of things. I can put my hope in many things. But when it comes to faith, if I'm going to have faith, then the word will come first. And I will base my faith off the word. I, I can't base my faith off of what some preacher said. I cannot base my faith off of what some spirit may have said. In the, I, I can't base my faith off of anything like that. It's got to be the word. I've got to have the word. If, 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 the word, if the word comes, if it's in the word, if the word is spoken, yes. then I can have faith on it. Yes. We can believe that God has power because we have word in Isaiah 40 and 26. 
We have word that tells us about the power of God. Isaiah 40, 26 says, Lift up your eyes on high, and behold, who hath created these things, that bringeth out their hosts by number. He calleth them all by names, by the greatness of his might, for that he is strong in power, not one faileth. I can believe that God has power because the word of God tells me that my God controls the entire universe. So my faith is based upon the word of God. My faith can say, my God said, and he controls everything. Therefore, my faith believes. Trust is founded upon that word. Yes. My faith, my faith has a word. Faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word. So I, it's not just any hearing, it's the word. When the word comes, I can put my faith in the word. My faith is in the word. It's in the word. Because the word came, because the word was given, I build my faith on that. It is the word of God that brings the ability to have faith in the very beginning. He speaks his word and we believe it. He says in his scripture and we can hold on to that. We can have faith because we have the word. We can have faith because we have word. Faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. All faith, all faith is founded upon the word of God. And so... Any faith that you have, anything that is faith, is, is based upon the word of God. Amen. So, so any word that is in here, any word that God speaks, any word that is given, is, is usable for faith. You can have faith in anything written here. Anything. God is a healer. How do I know my God is a healer? I've got a word. God is a deliverer. How do I know my God is a deliverer? I have a word. God, God, is, God is a miracle worker and can do anything in the life of any person. How do I know my God can do that? Is that simply hope that God would do it? Is it simply hope that God can heal? Is it simply hope that God can deliver me out of a situation or a circumstance? No, it's not just hope. I have faith because I have a word. Because I have a word, I can have faith. But faith itself, faith itself has got to have action. action yes. James 2.17. Uh-huh. James 2.17 says, Even so faith, if it hath not works, yeah. two together. Yeah. Yeah. Faith, I have a word, okay? Uh-huh. I've got a word. Yeah. I, I say I have faith in the word. Uh-huh. James says, you can declare that you have faith in something. Uh But if you don't have works about that faith, Uh then it's not faith. It's dead. dead. It's just an acknowledgement of the word. Simple an acknowledgement. God can do X. I have faith about it. But I never am ever do anything in my life ever about what I declare that my faith says about that scripture, that word, that thing. What does the, what, what, what is James saying? Then if I have faith like that, it's not faith. It's simply an acknowledgement. It's like the Pharisees. They, they could quote the scripture frontward and backwards. They could tell you anything about it. But faith was not there. They did not believe in these things because they never acted upon it. They looked in the face of the word himself, manifest among men and said, you're a liar. Faith never, never produced anything. Faith causes us to do something. The revelation of faith in our life is the result of our actions. Our actions reveal our faith. We can know that prayer is important. We can read in the Bible about the power of prayer. 
We can, we can discuss and we can, we can have a, a scriptural debate concerning the importance of prayer. And we can say, I have faith in the power of prayer. But if we don't pray, then we don't have faith in the power of prayer. We don't have faith in the importance of prayer. We don't realize how important prayer is. We, we can talk about it. We can, we can give you scriptures. We can do all of those things. But until we say with our life in our actions, then it doesn't matter. Our faith is, is not alive. That goes into everything about, about church. We can say we believe in healing. We can say we can believe in all of those things. But if our lives don't back it up, if we're not doing it, then our faith is dead. Faith takes the word given to us and says, I can act on it. Faith convicts us to the point that we will do something about it. Faith causes your reaction or your life to react to the word. That's what, that's what faith does. That is the measure of true faith. That's what true faith really is all about. We talk about it, we, can, we, can, we t- can declare it. A lot of people declaring a lot of things, but faith will change how you act. Yes. Faith, the true measure of faith, is more than just hearing and understanding, it's acting. I heard the word and it affected how I lived my life. I adjusted myself according to the word. Now, I am laying down a foundation here for my message to you today. I, I'm trying to put a foundation down for you so that I can preach my message to you. We, we have to have a, a base, and the base of all of our faith is the Word of God. The base of all of our faith is the Word. Faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the Word of God. Amen. We've got to have the Word. If Jesus said it, then we can have faith in it. If he said it, you can put your faith in it. If we have faith in the word, then we will act upon what the word says. Simple. Very simple. Very simple. I'm talking to you about the eyes of faith. The eyes of faith. Hebrews 11.1. Now we're going to spend some time in Hebrews here. Hebrews chapter 11. Chapter of faith. Hebrews 11, 1 says, Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. We know what faith is, how faith comes, and what, what it means to have faith. Okay? Now we're talking about the eyesight of faith. It's the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Faith does not see things as the natural man sees them. Faith doesn't look at things as they, quote unquote, are. Okay, it, it is this situation. It is that situation. Here is where I am in my life. Faith doesn't look at the circumstances that we are standing in. Faith does not do that. Faith has the ability to see things that do not exist. That, that is not there. That with the physical mind and the physical understanding and all of, your, all of your physical senses tell you one thing, faith tells you something totally opposite. Faith says, I have received a word of God and he has made a promise to me. There is a substance to what God has spoken to me about. God said that he has power. God says that he has authority. My faith says, even in the circumstance that I'm in, when I feel powerless and I feel like there is nothing around me, faith says, God said in his word he has power. But there's substance to it. Why? Because in the substance of it, all I've got to do is look around me at the world at the earth, at the heavens, at everything around me and see the power of God. There's substance to my faith. Why? Because my Bible tells me that he created the heavens and the earth. And I simply have to look around if I want to see the power of God and I want to base my faith on something. I can have substance. I can have evidence. I can have evidence. 
Faith says, I've got a word. He made a promise. God, God has power all around us. There is a substance to the faith that I have in the power of God. Because I have substance, I can have faith in the power of God. Are you following me this morning? God is telling us how to have spiritual eyesight. Look beyond the natural. Look to what God is saying in the spiritual. Faith sees things that do not exist in the natural. I have evidence of things that I cannot see. The word of God tells me that he is a provider. I have substance, but I have evidence. God says I'm a provider. What does the scripture say about the birds and the fowls of the air? He said, I, I provide for them. I take care of all of the birds and the fowl. It, it amazes me in the middle of winter when it's 20 below out there. There is food for the birds. Yes. Those red cherries that are on the tree. All of the leaves are gone. All of the, everything's gone. Somehow, those little cherries, those little berries maintain through the entire winter. How does that happen? Why didn't they fall off? Why didn't they go to seed? Why are they still on the tree in the middle of 20 degree weather? Why? Because God said, I'll provide. That's right. I'll provide. Yes. Whatever they need, I've got the ability to provide for the birds. So if, if God said that he will provide for you, God gave you a word in the Bible or to you specifically, then you can have faith in that because there is evidence. There's evidence. There is evidence all around us of God's provision. Talk to brothers and sisters in the church. Talk to others about what God has done in their life and how he's provided for them. Why? I can have faith. Why? Because I got a word. But I've got more than a word. I've got substance and I've got evidence. It's real. It's real. It's real. It's real. It's real. Spiritual eyesight sees eyesight sees the things that exist in the promises of God. Spiritual eyesight says, I see it. It's real. The eyesight of faith sees the word of God as a living thing. A living thing. The eyes of faith look at the word that was given and sees the word that was given as reality. Not, not, not abstract, not, not something that, well, you know, maybe uh, it could have been, yeah, no, it sees it as it's real. It, it's, it's concrete. It's substantial. I can build my faith on that. Why? Because I have a word. I have a word. Hebrews eleven seven. I'm going to give you some examples. By what? Faith. By faith. By faith, Noah, being warned of God of what? Of things what? Not yet seen. Noah, by faith, had been, Noah had been warned of God of something that he had never seen. And so because he had, he had been warned of God, what is that? That's a word. He got a word from God. Because he got a word of God about something he had never seen, what did he do? Moved with fear, prepared an ark to the saving of his house, by which he commendeth the world and became heir of the righteousness which is by faith. So, the, the scripture here is saying, God gave Noah a word. Noah got a word about something that had never happened before. It's never been in existence. There's never been a flood. There's never even been rain. But Noah had a word. And because Noah had a word, what does it say? Noah by faith. How did he get the faith? He had a word. What did his faith do? Caused action. The action that he had was by fear. He said, I don't want to be left behind. I don't want to be caught in the flood. I don't want to be the one that is trying to find a piece of tree to survive forever. So I've got a word from God about what he's going to do that has never been done before. Therefore, I will build an ark. I'll build an ark. It, faith, faith sees things that have never happened before. It says, God gave me a word. 
What did he tell you, Noah? He said he's going he's gonna, to he's gonna flood the earth. What even is that? What is that? Well, I don't know. Well, Jesus is coming back. What do you mean by that? Well, he's going to rapture his people off the earth. He's going to, he's going to take all of his people that have been, uh, have been uh, saved according to the scriptural methodology of salvation. Yes. He's going to take them off of the earth. They're going to leave. They're not going to be here anymore. No. What is that? I've never seen that before. Has anybody ever seen that before? No. Has it ever happened before? No. Only two times. Only twice. Yeah. Only twice. Well, three if you count Jesus. Yeah, that's right. yeah. uh, I can't remember their names now. But they were, they were no more because God took them. So it, there, there are... There are never a worldwide happening of this ever happening no. before. No. So how do we know it's going to happen? Why? We got a word. We got, word. We got a word. So what does that word do? It causes us to act. Amen. What have I got to do so that I am not somebody that is left behind here? What is it? What, what does the word tell me that I must do? Well, the word is very clear that I've got to repent of my sins. I've got to be baptized in Jesus' name for the remission of my sins. And I've got to be filled with the baptism of the Holy Ghost. That's what the word tells me. I've got to live according to the word of God. And, and, and then I am ready to be raptured. Uh, faith sees something that's not there. Right. Mm -hmm. yeah. Faith says, I've got a word. Yes. And because I've got a word, I'm going to act on that right. word. Right. Spiritual eyesight says, I see it. Uh -huh. yep. I see it. Yep. That thing is real. Yes. That thing is real. It's, it's not something that I ate pizza and I heard voices from heaven. No, this thing is real. This thing is real. Being warned of God of things not seen as yet. That's so amazing to me. He, he acted on something he had never seen before. He built an ark and, and went through all of the stuff that he went through of something he had never seen. Faith, the eyes of faith looked at the event that had never happened before. And the eyes of faith said, there's a flood coming. There's a flood coming. I'm going to do what God has told me. I'm going to work on this thing however many years it took Noah to build that ark. I'm going to do it. He didn't do it in a year. He didn't do it in 10 years. It took him many, many years to build that ark. Yeah. Hebrews 11.8. By faith, Abraham. How? By faith. Abraham. When he was called to go out. How, what does that mean? He had a word from God. God spoke to Abraham. Into a place which he should receive for inheritance, obeyed, and went out. How? Not knowing, Not knowing where he was going. I, 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 I got a word from God. Uh -huh. I'm Abraham. Uh -huh. I'm an old man. And, and God gave me a word and said, I want you to pick up and I want you to leave the place that you're at. I'm going to take you to a place that you have never seen before. And I'm going to give you a multitude of children that you've never seen before. And Abraham, the Bible says that Abraham, by faith. Faith says, I've never, ever been to the place that God has called me. I don't know what it looks like. I've never seen it before. But I believe that it exists. I believe that it's real. My eyes of faith see something that is out there that I've never seen before. I've never been there. I don't know what it's like. I only know that God said that he gave it to me and to all of my descendants. My descendants, what is that? I have no children at all. I have none. And God says, I'll give you children. And Abraham, by faith, he by faith believed in a son that he had never had. He could not see the son. Sarah's belly didn't grow. So it didn't, it, there was no child. But Abraham kept faith. Abraham says, I don't see him with my natural eyes. Yes. But I have spiritual eyes. Yes. I have the eyes of faith. And by the eyes of faith, I see a son. Yes. I see a son. Yes. I see a son. Yes. Now, we'll, 
We'll throw rocks at Abraham and we'll say Abraham messed up because he got Hagar and then had a son with Hagar. But Abraham at least had faith to say, I know I'm supposed to have a son. Maybe I misunderstood something with Sarah and, and maybe it's going to be with her. But he, no, he never left the hope that he himself would have a son. He saw the son irregardless. It was real to him. The son was real. How did Abraham have faith? Because he had a word. He had a word. Hebrews 11, 11. Through what? Through faith also who? Sarah. Sarah herself received strength to conceive seed. Now, we can, we got to understand what that is. She is around 100 years old. Okay? So Sarah, by faith, said, I am 100 years old. I'm still going to get pregnant. I'm 90-something years old. I'm going to give birth. When the Bible says she is past the time, we all know exactly what that means. And yet, Sarah said, I've been past the time for many years. It's been many years for me. But, what does the Bible say? By faith, through faith, also Sarah Sarah had faith, and so because she had faith, she received the strength to conceive seed and was delivered of a child when she was past age. Why? Because she judged him who is faithful, who had given the promise. She said, I've got a word. I've got a word. I got a word. The word came to me, and God is faithful. It's been a long time since yes. I've even been able to have a child. It's, I've been well past the age for years, but he's faithful. Why? I've got a word. It wasn't just hope. There was a time before. I'm sure when Sarah and Abraham lived back in their homeland, and she hoped for a child. She wanted a child. She desired a child. She had hoped that she would have a child. But all the time back when she lived in her former place, she never got a child. And she could only hope to have it. But after she got the word, after the word came to her and said, you will receive a child. You will bear a man child. Then she could have faith. Then she could say, God is faithful who has given me the promise and it will happen. And so Sarah, in her barrenness, looked upon herself and said, it's going to happen. I, I'm, I'm 70 years old. I'm well past the age, and I'm going to have a baby. I'm 75 years old. I'm well past the age, but I'm going to have a baby. Why? I, God gave me the promise. God spoke to me a word. I'm not hoping for this thing. I know it's going to happen. I have eyes of faith. I've never held that baby. I, it's not in my arms. But by faith. I'm holding that son right now. By faith, I've got him in my arms. By faith, I already know what his name is. By faith, I've got it all figured out. Why? Because he gave me a word. His word will never fail. And if he gave me a word, then I can build my faith on that thing. I can build my faith on it. Faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. So she had a word. And so she received strength because of her faith. She judged him faithful who had promise. The eyes of faith held the baby. The eyes of faith said, I've got him in my arms right now. He's with me right now. Hebrews eleven thirteen. These all died in faith, not having received the promises, but having seen them afar off. I have eyes of faith, right. and I see them. Yes. I can see them. Yep. I can see them. Amen. They're real. They're real. They, are, they are as real as the chairs that are in this That's room. Right. Yeah. They're as real as the floor I'm standing on. Yes. 
They're, they're as real as a roof that is over my head. They're as real as this pulpit that holds my Bible. The promises of God are as real as, as real as anything there. In fact, they are more real than this. Because, because all of this can pass away. All of this can be burned up. All of this can be thrown in the garbage. But the promises of God will never fail. They'll never go away. They, they cannot be undone. They saw them afar off. The eyes of faith let them embrace each and every promise that was given to them. The eyes of faith did that. I'm talking to this church about the eyes of faith. God is speaking to this church today. He is telling this church today that we must have the eyes of faith. Spiritual sight to see things that we cannot see. The ability to look at the promises of God and say that they are real. I see them. I see them. The promises of God is real. God is speaking to us today and saying that we have got to first believe His word in this church. We, we have, have we been given a word? Have we been given a word? Come on, church. Is there a word to this church? Okay, if there is a word to this church, then we have got to believe the word that has been given to us. We are called to this city to affect this city. We've been given a word that that's what we're going to do. So we've got to believe the word. We've got, we've got to understand that, the, that we've got to have spiritual eyesight about that word. We must first believe the word that has been given to us. Through the eyes of faith, we will see many congregations in this city turning to the truth of the word of God. Through the eyes of faith, we will see the power and the presence of God fall in our city. Through the eyes of faith, we will see in our grocery stores people receiving the baptism of the Holy Ghost. Through the eyes of faith, we will see in the streets and on the playgrounds and out in the community of our city people that are being healed of cancer, healed of disease, healed of everything that is malforming them. Through the eyes of faith, we will see this. Through the eyes of faith, we have got to see this. We've got to have eyes of faith to see this. Has the word been given? Then it's not a hope. It's not a hope. If the word is given, put your feet on the word. If your feet are on the word, then have eyes of faith. But what, 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 what does the word say about faith? If we believe the word, then we got to act on it. So what, what, what's inhibiting us from acting on it? What, what stops us from praying for people? What stops us? We've got to have the eyesight of faith. We've got to act on the word that's been given to us. We've got to act on the word that we're standing on. If we believe it, we've got to act on it. We have to act on it. We've got to act on it. We've got to believe the word. The, there, the liberality of word that has been brought to us is so amazing. I believe God has spoken to us specifically. I believe that God has told us that all of his promises are yes and amen. I believe that we as a church must walk in unity. I believe that God gave us the victory and that God is in the process of making us perfect. I believe that God has set us in a season of harvest. I believe that God has told us to dream big. And I believe that God has given us the word. And he is an awesome God. These are all words that God has spoken to this church. I have a word so I can have faith on that word. In order to have faith in that word, I've got to act. I must do something about what I have heard. I must be in unity. I must believe in his promises. I must allow him to perfect me. I must walk in victory. I must reach people in the season of harvest. I've got to dream big. And I've got to believe in the power of my God. I've got to act on the word. God is telling us today in this house to open your vision. Open your vision, church. Open your vision. Begin to look at what God has spoken and begin to see with the eyes of faith. Begin to look on what God has said. Begin to found yourself upon it. Begin to put roots in it. And say, I believe it with everything that I've got. 
I have no doubt. I have no disbelief. I don't care. Sometimes it's so easy to look at the things that we see in the natural. It would be so easy for me to look upon this congregation and look at all of the blank spaces that are out there in the congregation today. And it would be so easy for me just to get discouraged and say, well, I know what God said. And I know what God promised. But it's just going to happen maybe in another church in another place or some other pastor or some other thing. No, I could easily be discouraged. But the eyes of faith have got to say, but I see a church that is full and I see things that God has given. I had a dream. I don't know if I told you about the dream. And I had a dream some, some, some weeks back. And, and I, I, uh, first of all, it was, an, it was a huge building. It, it, it was a huge auditorium with a huge balcony that wrapped all the way around on both sides. And I remember all of the chaos that was going on before the service happened. Our, our music was out of, out of kilter and, and the sound was out of kilter. Every, things were just a mess. And I remember I walked out from the back and I'm trying to figure out what's going on and I'm trying to give direction. And then it's finally, it's like, look, I'm just going to preach. And I walked up to the pulpit to preach and when I walked up to the pulpit to preach everything came in order and I believe God was just telling me you're going to have this but you're not ready you don't have the support you don't have the things that you need to do something like this I will build it and I will give it to you it will come to you. You will have it. But you've got to develop the things that need to be developed first. You've got to put in the processes and the things that have got to happen to support something this big. So every one of you are here for a purpose. Why? Because you're going to be used to support something like that. You're going to be given talents and gifts and things that God has purposed and put inside of you so that you can help in the building of this church. Yes. I can stand in the pulpit and I can preach. That's not a problem. I can preach to a thousand and I can preach to one. It doesn't matter. It's not the preaching. It's the support that has to happen. Yep. Eyes of faith. Yep. We, we, we've got to have eyes of faith, church. Yes. I believe that we can double this year. I, I, I don't have a word. I'm telling you honestly. I'm asking God about that. I'm praying. I'm asking God to do that. I have a hope for it. God is not giving me a word. But I have a hope for it. And I know that we can double this year. I know we can. And so I do have a word. That we will double. In one service. In, or in one revival. I do have that word. If this is the one God has chosen, great. Uh -huh. yep. I'm, I'm good with it. Yep. I'm asking God if he'll delay it. Because I want to wait till we're 100, 200, and then let's double. I want the most bang for my buck. <laughs> when I cash that baby in, I want to cash it on double coupon day. But I'll take whatever God gives. Absolutely. But what I'm telling you, church, lift up your eyes. Come on, lift up your eyes. Come on, come on, lift up your eyes. Stop, stop looking at little things. Stop being, stop being concerned about the things that you're seeing around you. Stop worrying about what you see in your family. And, and somebody in your family is struggling against you. And somebody in your family is trying to keep things away and, trying, and is pushing against. Stop worrying about that. Do you have a word? Then believe the word. Let the eyes of faith go in you. Let the eyes of faith change the way that you act. Let the eyes of faith let you lift up your eyes and say, it's going to happen. It's going to happen. It's going to happen. It's going to happen. Chad, you're sitting there today because there were eyes of faith that said, he's coming back. There was a word given that you would be back in this place. And as hard as you fought out there, as much as you resisted, there was a word of faith that was given. And we held to that thing with everything that we had. And I constantly kept looking back there. But I see you now, my friend. I see you now. Eyes of faith. Don't worry about it. God's got a promise That's for you. Right. God's given you something, Casey. Yes. Don't worry about the things that frustrate you and the things that bring you down. Right. Look with eyes of faith and say, God gave me a word. Yes. I'm going to trust it. Yes. I'll act on it. Yes. Quit worrying about it. Right. Crystal, God gave you a word. Yes. 
Don't worry about what you're seeing right now. Don't worry about the circumstances. Lift up your eyes. And put your eyes into faith. Faith cometh by hearing. And hearing by the word. I got a word. I got a word. Because I got a word, I have faith. It's not going to fail. And I see it. I see it. Can we stand today? This is our calling. One thing I, you have got to get in your mind. And the devil has lied to every one of you. But something that you have got to get in your mind is that you are here for uh, on purpose. Yes. You're not here on that's accident. Right. You right. didn't just choose to come. You just didn't make a decision that that's what you wanted to do. God or arranged things in your life and put things in the place that you would be here today. Yes. God did that. You moved down here, you Heather and Chad, you moved down here from Anchorage, not by accident, but because God ordained that you would be here in this city. Why? He ordained that you would be in this city and you could drive by and see that sign that is out there and come in here and receive the baptism of the Holy Ghost. Every person that is in this place is here because God brought you here. And if God brought you here, then you have a purpose and you have a reason to be here. You've got a ministry that is necessary for this city. And you've got to stop thinking so stinking small. You've got to stop looking at yourself as so inconsequential. You've got to stop looking at what God has done in your life and is wanting to do through you as inconsequential. You have a word. Let me give you the word right now. You have a ministry. You have a ministry. The Bible says in this word that you have been given the ministry of reconciliation. What that means is that every person has been given the ministry of soul winning. Everyone is meant to go reconcile somebody back to Jesus. Everybody. And so you've got a ministry. And the devil will lie to you and tell you that you're only meant to sit in a church pew. You're only meant to come to church, hear the preaching, go home, never change, never doing anything in the kingdom of God. But it's time. It's time. Hear this preacher this morning. Hear this message this morning. You've got to have eyes of faith. You've got to think big. you got to dream big. This is so much bigger than you. You've been plugged into something that is full of authority. You've been plugged into something that's full of power. You've been plugged into something that's got so much energy. You've been plugged into something that is so full of the anointing of God. It's going to flow over you. But you've got to lift up your eyes. Lift up your eyes. Lift up your eyes. Lift up your eyes. Come on, church. Come on, church. Lift up your eyes. Come on, get eyes of faith. Come on, church. Let the eyes of faith operate in you. I open these altars today. I open these altars. Come.